We are in a war most Americans don't even know exists. We are in a war with dogfighting. In a dogfight, one dog or the other is going to win. They're not monsters, it's the people on the other end of the leash that are the monsters. This sport is my religion, basically. If they don't shoot the dog, some of these guys electrocute the dogs. We love these dogs. It's not the ice capades. The pit bull terry was originally used for bull baiting. One or two dogs were released on a bull, torturing it until it finally died. This is one of the highest forms of entertainment during their era, to see a dog kill a bull. This became illegal in 1835. Since it was too difficult to conduct covert matches, that's when they started using dog against dog. Dog fighting favored the smaller dog, so the strong bulldogs were crossed with an athletic type terrier to become the bull interior. Since they were less known for their bull baiting skills and more known for their fighting skills in the pits, then they became the pit bull terrier. They were brought here from Ireland and England and became America's family dog. They became America's dog As the boundaries of the United States expanded, pit bulls were right there. The pit bull, at the turn of the 19th into the 20th century, was the number one dog of choice for the average American family. The pit bull was extremely intelligent, extremely malleable, and extremely devoted to its master. phenomenal pieces about this dog in history is a medium-sized pit bull named Stubby. Stubby played a big role with the Connecticut National Guard in uh, World War I. In France, Stubby was like another soldier. And one night while sleeping in a trench, he snapped awake, gave a low growl and raced around the corner, and Stubby found a German spy. <laughs> that spy would have been able to go back to his unit and actually give away everything about this unit. He underwent several gas attacks and they adapted a mask in a gas attack. He was able to wake up the unit and they were able to put on their mask and pretty much save the unit from potential death. If Stubby wasn't around, you may have 500 to 1,000 body bags. Stubby actually met three presidents. He met President Woodrow Wilson, Presidents Harding and Coolidge in ceremonies at the White House. He did receive the Purple Heart for wounds that he sustained during World War I. The General of the Army, John Pershing, awarded Stubby his highest honor, a gold medal. Following his death, there's a casing that was made of Stubby and is on display. Pitbull is, is really a smart animal that loves human beings. You only have to refer back to the TV show, The Little Rascals. That dog is a well-socialized, happy pitbull. You can see the children playing with him. That's how it should be. And remember to look inside the shoe for that famous picture. When I was a little boy, I'd grown up around Buster Brown commercials. 
my dog, Tig. I never before realized that that dog, Tig, was what today we call a pit bull. What have we done that could transform an, an animal from our friendly poster animal for a shoe commercial into a malicious, demonic animal that has to be eliminated? And if we could figure out how we did that to these animals, maybe there would be some lessons for how we do it to ourselves as human beings. The American Pit Bull Terrier of today is a very different dog than it was 20 years ago. What has largely happened to this breed is what has happened to other breeds when they've gotten popular as the tough dog to have, and that is that you have people breeding them for the wrong reasons. You have people keeping them in conditions that we don't feel are acceptable. That breed has been used by the young generation I would say the macho dog. Kind of giving it a bad name by causing it to fight other dogs. People have taken that instinct of a pit bull to bond to a human, to really love its owner, and they've totally manipulated it so that they're just using these dogs to engage in a fight with another dog. The underworld combined these elements, realizing that they could train the pit bull terrier to become a vicious fighting creation. It is so far underground, it is so well entrenched, the American public has virtually no idea it's taking place. This sport is my religion, basically. I have to wear a disguise to talk about something I love because in the eyes of the politicians that say this sport is cruel, barbaric, should be illegal, and everybody that does this with their dogs should be executed, has never seen how a professional dogman takes care of his dogs or his yard. I don't see in any way how anybody can consider that sport. And Getting locked up is always there. To me, it's not like we're out committing, committing murder or doing robberies or, or selling drugs. These dog fighters, you know, they, they have no regards for these animals. Of all breeds, right now, Pitbull is probably the number one breed owned by irresponsible, uncaring, and abusive owners. Basically, what it boils down to is love for these dogs. Some of them will talk about how they love the breed. They don't love the breed. They love the money they think they're going to make from this thing or the violence and blood that they get to see. We love these dogs. We're not hurting anybody else. I don't know if I would die for the dogs, but I damn sure know that my dogs would die for me in that box. This is a dog who will play ball with everything he has. And this is a breed that is fiercely loyal very committed to whatever they're doing and that may be a trait that a dog fighter might like a pit bull is specifically bred to be a working dog and in in all of our cases working dog we mean a competition dog a battle dog <laughs> Breeding of the dog is revolved around its fighting abilities with less attention given to appearance or confirmation. These dogs are bred to be in there duking it out basically. But they're not made to be man aggressive. What I find in a pit bull terrier is 90% of the time 
the ones that have any aggression is normally animal aggression and not people aggression. Pit bulls by themselves are very sociable, loving animals. But when you take a dog like a pit bull and you feed it, you feed it hot peppers, gunpowder, you brutalize it, it's no wonder there are more attacks against human beings. The worst thing that would happen to any of my neighbors is maybe one of their dogs or cats would get killed by one of my dogs. They would never have to worry about their six, seven-year-old kid getting mauled by any of my dogs. People aggressive dogs weren't used in the pit because you have several people in the pit involved in a fight. You know, you might bite one of the people in the pit. So those type of dogs weren't even used in a breeding program. Pit bulls probably have a bad reputation for several reasons. Breeding, bad breeding, bad publicity, being in the wrong owner's hands. Why blame the gun? Blame the gun owner. A gun won't do anything unless it's in the wrong person's hand and they squeeze the trigger. To breed these dogs and to make the best and being recognized as breeding the best is what everyone strives for, to be the grand champion. I just got my little black dog hooked for a championship match. Get ready to start on our eight-week key. Two of them is a pre-key, and the other six weeks puts her in condition. From puppy to match age, on a dog with feed, upkeep, vaccinations, hardware, you're gonna spend anywhere from 1,500 to, to three grand in keeping that dog around for two years. If the dog ends up to be worth it, you're gonna you're gonna make that investment tenfold, just with the name and the bloods and breedings and whatever else comes from the actual fight. In order to get to the grade, to get to that box, it's a lengthy process. You go through what's called a rolling, where you just let a dog hit another dog for five minutes, if that long, and then you bring them along just like you would a, a beginning fighter. You're just seeing where their heart's at. After a schooling process, after you've rolled your dog three times and maybe did an off the chain and what they consider OTC off the chain, that's where you do a match with a dog who just comes straight off the chain for a couple hundred bucks. And I mean, I have seen, I have seen people do it for up to 5,000 off the chains. You're seeing exactly if this dog is going to have the game and the will to stay in that box. They don't use the word fight a lot. They use game testing, game breeding, gameness. A, a game test is actually a fight that will determine how much punishment, pain, and exhaustion a pit bull will go through before quitting. The game test is to make sure a dog is ready to be put in the box for money, set up competition, start taking this dog and getting this dog put basically into the pro circuit. Now comes the conditioning phase of the match. A lot of people do exercises for the jaws. They use a spring pole. A dog grabs it and shakes it and pulls it. There's a bunch of different exercise equipment you can use. You can swim tanks. I use an email. You see in Sears. And I use a slap mill, which is a treadmill with slats on it. Free spinning treadmill. Nowadays, a lot of people use steroids. Steroids is, is a tricky business to be in because if you don't know what you're doing with steroids, you'll actually hurt your dog more than help them. And after the show's over, a lot of times people that use steroids, they can't save their dog anyway. Now I developed this little technique for my dog's teeth. I give them a shot of Tealers all and knock them out a little bit.
And then I open their mouth, this weight collar, and I use my Dremel. The other guy and his dog, they don't have a fighting chance when it comes to the sharpness of my dog's teeth. This little black dog comes in with razor blades for teeth. I don't think this gives me an unfair advantage. I just make sure my dog's teeth are as sharp as I can get them. That's how you get these matches underway. You hook them, you bring them to the spot, you weigh them, forfeits are in, referees made, and now you have what they considered a sanctioned match. She's going at 31. Yeah, 31. I know Black Dog wins tonight. That means her father just became Rom, and we're going to make a killing on a stud feet with him from then on out. situation by people who are interested in making money off of them. There are levels of pit bull fighting. There's the street level. The professional level is by far the most profitable in the world. They hold the dog fights in extremely rural settings, in abandoned warehouses. They hold them in secure dwellings, having police radios at their disposal, armed guards. You need specific identification to be allowed into the dog fight. Today, the internet has been a tremendous boon. We've identified well over 200 sites devoted to dog fighting. Linked to more than 1,800 kennels with emphasis on the fighting aspects of the breed. There is a underground publication to where people can actually know what other people's dogs are doing. It's the kind of key track of what blood is doing what and how it's doing it. You usually need a host subscriber, somebody that's already a member to whatever periodical that will get them started with a, with a magazine. You get a number and everything for the match that you just did. Win, lose, draw, however it comes out. Other dog men will know about it. When I first got involved, it was usually a weekend thing where uh, guys got together from all over the country. It was for fun. Not anybody can just come to these shows, these, these matches. There's usually a gate fee, 20 to $50. You're not just going to come watch people's dogs battle it out for nothing. Dog fighting has become an extremely popular activity amongst criminals and gang members. Doctors, lawyers, blue collar workers. The sport uh, transcends all lines of people, professionals and non-professionals. 
the average clientele of these dog fights is not a church-going, God-fearing individual. There's always been fights and matches, and I've heard of shooting, stabbings. You got people getting drunk. You got sore losers. You got disagreements. You got all kinds of crazy shit going on around the side. A thousand for one. That's four of it. It's a general rule before a contest uh, is discussed. Both sides agree to a purse. Anybody wants to bet even up? Could be as little as $50 or a million dollars. I witnessed a contest. Purse was a half a million. When you have that level of money involved, those people feel they need to protect themselves and their investment any way they can. You have to know people. You have to be invited. There has to be a reason for a person to be at these shows because it's not, it's not the ice capades. The referee is used in a contest to decide who's the winner going to be. just like a referee used in any other sport. The way matches end, you can have a draw, which is where you both decide that, hey, the dogs have seen enough, they're the same caliber, call it quits. You have a pickup where you can see the match, you decide, my dog's taken enough, there's nothing he can do with this dog, I'll pick him up. He'll see another day. Or you have a, a flat out quit. Your dog decides, that's enough, I can't do it anymore, I can't make it, this dog is way too much, so he stops. And what I, what I mean by stopping is, in a box, you have what's called scratch lines. And they're in two corners of the box. Take them back to the corner, sponge them off. As the ref gives a 30 count, you release your dog. Your dog has to then run across the entire length of the box and take hold or mouth his opponent. If he does not take hold or mouth, he has a 10 second count. If he does not do it within 10 seconds, the match is over, you win. Fights can last anywhere from five minutes to five hours. The longest match reported was six hours. The show is just a part of it. You have all kinds of other parts that tribute to the fighting. Breeding, showing, studying. Fighting is just one part of it, but unfortunately it's the illegal part of it. It's the part everybody likes to make a big deal about. This sport is not hurting anybody. In America, everybody loves competition and they love brutality. This injury is going to occur in all types of sports, competitive sports. You know, some dog fighters say to me, well, dog fighting is no different than, than human beings boxing. And I say, it's ridiculous. You cannot even make that comparison. First of all, besides the fact that whether something's voluntary or not, an equivalent of a dog fight to a human activity would be humans fighting with razors or knives. When dogs fight, they're cutting, these teeth are sharp, they're cutting, they're tearing, they're ripping apart the other animal. It's uh, brutal, but it's not cruel. Just like a boxing match. Dogs were weighed through the agreement of the two people that was involved. They usually fought for a specific amount of money and at a specific weight, so it was not like somebody had an advantage. You have to have a genuine interest and love for the animal to actually appreciate it. Fighters are in the ring because they choose to be in the ring. Dogs are in the box because they choose to be in that box. These dogs have no choice. They're put thrust together in a situation where they have to fight or die. These dogs are in it by choice, not by force. These dogs want to be in that box. 
these dogs don't want to be in that box, why would people bet on it? Worst injury I ever seen in the, in the pit was probably a dog being disemboweled. They're seeing eyes coming out of the socket, genitals ripped apart, stomachs opened up. These dogs are unbelievable. I've seen dogs get their faces ripped off and still come back and win the match. There, there's no telling. There's no telling what they'll do for you. After the match is over, you have a hurt and banged up dog. And that dog needs some type of vet attention. But you can't just go running this dog out to any vet because you got to worry about who the vet's going to call, who the vet's going to talk to. So unfortunately, a lot of really good dogs are lost because of this. A little black dog just won a championship. And we're trying to do everything we can to save her. We'll hook her up to some lactated ring and replace some body fluids. And we give her some antibiotics to fight infection and try and close some of these wounds up as best we can. This dog is a champion. This isn't your just running the mill dog anymore. You have to either learn how to take care of these dogs yourself or bring a vet, a veterinarian with you. It's frightening to think that these people are attempting to practice veterinary medicine on an animal who is in desperate need of true veterinary care. I could probably go to, to any veterinarian's office right now and get a job as, as some type of head vet tech, and I've never took one day of training in my life. Some of them will stitch up these animals, tie them down, you know, and, and, and do horrible butchering jobs, like you being badly wounded and going to some quack on the street. So they inflict a lot of brutality on these animals. It's not just from the fight. But it's just the way they care for these animals. Obviously, they're not veterinarians, but they are doing this with such regularity that there is, they have some sort of skill, a frightening skill. If the dog is not competition worthy or quits, the dog continues no more. And I'm not saying to be hard, I'm not saying it to be mean, it's just me, my breed my blood is going to continue to, to, to produce what needs to be produced and stay in that box to the duration. And if they don't, they're gone, no matter what the price is. They just let these dogs rot in some you know, vacant apartment or in the basement of some home you know, to die a slow death from its injuries. And, and it doesn't die right away. They set these dogs on fire while they're still alive because they're angry at them. They masking tape the animals, they make them die a slow death of suffocation. And these kids were as young as seven, eight, nine years old. They tied them up to a fence, they took a metal stick, they tried poking its eyes out. These are great animals, and to see them go to waste in the wrong people's hands is, is, is alarming and disturbing, and, and disheartening too. I'm involved in this sport strictly for the breed. I don't really need no recognition. I don't do it for the, the prizes, the purses, the trophies. All those things are secondary to me. If there's anything I could do for the breed is to help establish it for future generations. My little black dog is a registered champion now. She has a certificate. People know who she is and she's worth about $25,000 now. Different shows have different prizes. They have Best in Show. They have a Norman H. Hooten Award, which is a Lifetime Achievement Award for dogs. For all doggers, that's what most of them would strive to get. I would like to get that. It looks all right. It's very difficult for police to get undercover operatives in. He got, he got some jaws on him now. It's hard to, to actually arrest someone, even bust someone having a pit bull ring because they're closely knitted. We've actually had two successful cases over the last 10 years. We're jumping down this road now. A lot of light coming on down there. We're involved in, in raids every year on dogfighting operations based on intelligence work. Oh, yeah, we're going in. There's a hill 
helicopter. Yeah. A lot of lights coming on down there. People running. People running everywhere in the woods. Please hold, please hold. Everybody hold. Hold, hold up. Hold, back up, you said. Back up, back up. Back up, you said. Back up. Most dogs would stay in the game until they were forcibly stopped. Until the federal government or state agencies or whoever came in and literally took their yard and locked them up and made them stop competing. The largest event that I was ever involved with was in Mark Tree, Arkansas. 250 people were caught, significant quantities of, of drugs, uh, as well as 69 handguns, along with a half a million dollars. One contract alone was for $40,000. We execute a search warrant here today. We recovered suspected narcotics. Uh, it's not uncommon you know, uh, when we're doing these investigations to get guns, different types of drugs. We found the ring in the home uh, with the blood on the walls and also the treadmill, the prior sticks. You see the weights hanging up, IVs. You see all kind of medication they use on the dogs once they get chewed up from the fight. A lot of the material that we've come up with are all part and parcel of the dog fighting subculture. These basically just aren't nice people. Usually, if a show is actually raided and there's dogs there, dogs are usually confiscated and destroyed. We recover a lot of animals. But when we get these animals, we, you know, we, we bring them to the city of Chicago Animal Care Control. As far as adoptions and what happens from there, that's their job. What we don't want is uh, pit bulls or any dog that we recover to return to a bad situation. See how thirsty the poor things are, you know? Here in the city of Chicago, we have a no adoption policy regarding any type of pit bull that we impound, which means that you can't go in there trying to adopt out a pit bull. They're just not going to allow that. They cannot be adopted out, and it's sad. I mean, we could certainly not take a chance of placing dogs that's been trained to attack other animals and, and put it back in society. When they, they do have shows in, in America, they make sure they're in a state where it's still a misdemeanor. If you get caught, cruelty to animals is the charge. And unless they actually catch you with the dogs in the box doing it, the worst thing they can give you is animal cruelty or some kind of conspiracy. If I receive a run for uh, dogs fighting with people, you know, people around encouraging the dogs to fight, uh, it's just a misdemeanor charge. And in order to make a lockup for it, I have to actually witness that happening, the, the act of the two dogs fighting in progress. The police know that they can invest an incredible amount of time trying to investigate these situations. It's not something they want to invest time in because they know that the conviction is going to be so small that the people that they get at these rings may walk away with a misdemeanor. The convictions vary from as little as a fine up to jail time. The dog fighting is a felony in almost every state. They're now looking at passing a law that says that any owner that has any paraphernalia that looks like pit bull fighting and pit bulls with wounds on them can be charged with the felony. Police want to lock me up for that? It's their choice. They're not going to get me to talk about it. We need police to aggressively go after these criminals, these dog fighters, make the appropriate arrests, confiscate these animals, and treat this in a serious manner as they would with any other crime. Dog fighting and animal cruelty, it's criminal conduct, criminal behavior, requires a law enforcement response. The only way that these things are going to stop is by people being courageous enough to speak out and say, this is happening in my community, it's making my community unsafe, and someone needs to stop it.
Dogfighting in Italy is controlled by the Mafia. There are reports of uh, dogfighting going on in Japan, on the Philippines, Bosnia, Chechnya, Brazil, Guam, Taiwan. The dogs that are used were exported from the United States. We are able to see the United States as a leader in that aspect, that it's not legal to fight dogs in this country anywhere. We certainly need to have better enforcement of those laws to stop these underground, hidden rings of dog fighting from happening and from exporting those animals to other countries. In Mexico, it's legal. In Japan, it's legal. A lot more shows are starting to take place over there, and I think eventually that's probably where they're going to do all their shows. In Prince George's County, not only the Pit Bull Terrier is banned, but the American Staffordshire Terrier is banned as well. I just hope one day they just never come to my door and tell me that I'm going to have to get rid of her because I don't know who will go first, me or the people that come to my door. <laughs> I couldn't imagine getting rid of my baby. No way. No way. I kind of figured out where you lived at because I saw a tether outside when I was walking. So the property manager said, call Animal Control and call PG County and get this dog out of here. Right. She said, because I can tell it's a pit bull puppy, get him out of here. So I said, okay, and that's what I did this morning. Well, I tell you what, if you want, you want to walk over with me right now and tap on the door and see if she answered for you? Okay. I mean, she answered for you, the bottom line, the dog's got to go. Well, we came to look and we could tell that she's keeping him in the hall closet. There he is, right there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> What's her name? Tamika. Tamika, animal control, are you here? Sit. Sit. They punish dog owners who are keeping their dogs responsibly. You will capture some dangerous animals but you won't capture a whole host of dangerous animals that are out there. It doesn't matter that you're doing everything right, that your dog has had training and you have taken the time with that animal to raise her in a way that she is a safe member of your family. It's okay, boy. It's okay, boy. You're telling those people that none of that matters just because she happens to be a pit bull. They're not banning these dogs because they're a sporting dog. Right. They're banning the dog because they have no clue what these dogs are bred to do. If they ban the pit bull in my state, it would do nothing to deter me from these dogs. One of the things that I found in breed bands is they don't work. The Presno Canario actually killed someone in California. There's no ban here on Presno Canarios. I still say it's not the dog, but it's the owner. You can take any dog and make it mean. You can take any dog and make it a great pet. It's a sad day for the pit bull turtle. Hey, girl. Here in Prince George's County, since the ban, we average probably euthanizing about a thousand of those dogs a year. In shelters, they don't allow pit bulls to leave. How are you? Many dogs who are screened and judged unfit for human society must be humanely euthanized. There are thousands and thousands of pit bulls being euthanized every day in this country. In Los Angeles alone, it is estimated that about 200 pit bulls a day die in shelters. Today at 4 o'clock, the animal's time will be up here at the county shelter.
For every one dog of this breed that goes to a good home, 600 die. Girl. This is my alligator. This is Lola. Ellie Mae. This is Seth. And this is Mazzy. And Seth is a rescue dog. I've probably rescued over in the 19 year period probably close to a thousand dogs. I stuck my hand in his mouth to make sure he wouldn't bite me, and then he was mine. This is Lorna Dune. You get lots of weird looks and people making sure their kids don't go near them. Our, our main focus is that we rescue as many pit bulls as possible. I went and walked through the shelter and saw these beautiful eyes, as you see, and <laughs> had to have them. Our adoption process starts with us evaluating the dog's temperament. His name is Wiley now. So this is Luke. Angus, he's just great with people. We mama pit bulls. The second thing that we do is we take the dog to the vet. This is Caleb. He is about three and a half years old. We rescued him. He'd been hit by two cars and he's missing a hind leg. Once they've completed all their medical care and they've recouped from surgery, at that point, send them into dog training. I wouldn't give him up for anything in the world. He's a lot of my life. This is Drew. I love kids. I love people. I die, they to give me lots of kisses. Where they get obedience training, socialization, taken out in public, and then at that point we put them up for adoption. I was totally amazed how loving they are. We're holding up the world right here. It's just amazing to me what the stigma is around this breed. She is a wonderful dog, she's great with kids. If we do see any type of aggression towards humans, we will not place the dog. I'm not an aggressive bone in her potty. This is Lexi. She's pink if you get her in the right light. She hasn't ever met a person that she just doesn't love. I found all my dogs to be 110% human friendly. And back here is Lady Madonna. I would definitely get one again. This goes always the last one. Come on, move it, move it. Move I think people should have a permit to own dogs and learn about dog ownership, and that would also include breed-specific classes. Uh, not only do you learn about how to care for a dog, but you learn about your different breeds that you can own. And that would protect society, that would protect dog owners, and that would certainly protect the dogs too. People would be better off if they had some sort of license to own certain dogs like the DMV. People who want to drive a car, want that privilege to drive a car, it, it's a privilege to own a pet. My dog's out of the kennel and ready to fight. And they not about peace, so when they unleash, they ready to bite. I hope you good with your hops and sprints to get away from these pits. You gotta do more than hop for fits. One bite In inner city schools, surprisingly, Every, every kid in the class will raise their hand when, they, when we've asked, have you seen a dog fight? Most men dogs get bit up like postmen. As you can see, she is the baddest dog out here. Is the baddest dog out here. This dog can't of my dog, right? Take this. Soft dogs will make you feel soft. You gotta be harder than that, man. You need an animal around you. When you got this dog, what do you feel like this dog? Make you feel superior to everybody else. And the bit of my choice gotta be a red nose because I had no challenges. It just got dead foes. I think the young generation uh, is the macho. If I got a, a pit bull turn, I'm, I'm, I'm bad. I'm the man. If you're walking across the neighborhood with your pet, and so when some bad man comes up with, with his pet, or say, yo, my pet's better than yours, you're like, man, see me. <laughs> But don't nobody out here want to see this dog right here. Can nobody see this? This dog is this dog's off the chains. What?
The whole media exposure of this dog has been amazing. How many videos have used images of these animals snarling, barking, biting, going after people to show how tough they are, to show how ugly they are, the whole gangster mentality. It's, it's the toughness, it's the look of, of the muscles and, 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 and looking mean and looking strong, and it's, it's all about image. Now, I think the rabbits be using pit bulls and rap videos because it, it shows a sense of viciousness, and, and the rappers want to be seen as being vicious and gangster, and pit bulls are supposed to be uh, gangsters, you know. Kids are impressionable. They look up to a lot of these sports figures, rap stars that are involved in illegal activities, dog fighting among them, and seem to be operating with impunity. We need to be sensitizing kids. We need to be teaching them how to empathize where animals are true victims. We just received a call in reference to some kids at the back of a church possibly fighting pit bulls, so we're going to go in and investigate. What do you got going on here? Oh, they're running, they're running, they're running. We got some young guys fighting pit bulls in the field. They just ran and hit into a wooded area. That's at the intersection of Gardner and Akakee at Asbury Methodist Church uh, behind the church in the field. Any of these animals that lead you late at the park, we big dogs. Mm -hmm. And y'all cats afraid of the buck, you hear me? Mm -hmm. Tell us it. You see these young boys just let two dogs go in the alley and they go around in circles for five minutes and it's over. That's street stuff. That's so far from the truth. This sport is professionally organized. This sport is people that love the breed, that love the dogs. They want the best on their yard, and they're going to breed the best. They're going to breed the best to the best. And the only way they can find out what the best is, is to put them in that box and compete with them. My best dog has a match coming up. If, if my best dog doesn't pull through, I've had offers up to 25000 for this dog. But if this dog were to stop, quits cold, that dog would be on the planet no more. Curs are like show dogs that people don't want anymore. They're, they're a waste, they're a burden. So we just put down dogs that quit. I've seen beginners who are in this sport who completely, completely disgrace themselves and this breed by putting them down by any means necessary. There doesn't tend to be any love lost when a dog embarrasses its owner. A lot of the owners will just shoot their dog. Some electrocute them. They're not Kleenex. They're animals. They have lives and dreams. An animal that, that can give so much love and loyalty certainly deserves better. We've got to get back to the time where you have an animal, a dog, a cat, it's your pet, you love it, your children bond to it, you care for it. If we're, if we're not raising kids that are compassionate and kind and have regards for other living creatures, I really don't know what our future is going to be for any of us. I think there's a lot of people in this country who feel that what we do to animals, we do to ourselves. The pit bull has something that is attractive to all of us. I think it was Gandhi who said that a society is judged by its treatment of its animals. And if that is truly the case, we're not doing too well. No matter what this country does, the sport will continue.